We are here at In the Light, and it is my pleasure to interview legendary AIDS activist, playwright, Larry Kramer, who founded ACT UP, GMHC, and recently, uh, well, in 2004, came out with the tragedy of today's gays when George Bush was elected. We now have a new president that has filled the country with hope and optimism. Do you share any of that optimism, Larry? Very much a wait and see thing, Bunny. I don't feel too great about everything, but I don't feel I've seen the danger signs yet. He, he hasn't done very much for us, but he has, hasn't done very much for a lot of people. At this early moment, we keep hearing that um, there are other things that are more important. We, we always get talk like that, short end of the stick. And it's just a question of how long we can get it. I wish he would open an office just for gays and lesbians, transgenders, etc. concerns, and I don't see that happening. Other other minorities have had their offices open, people of color, uh, women. Uh, but uh, once again, we haven't. Um, were you enthused by Most the prop? Most is enthused. Oh. Enthusiastic. Oh. Were you sorry? Were you enthusiastic, or, or were you um, Was I for him? glad to see the? Uh, well, I mean, he's, he's obviously an improvement, but were you <laughs> glad to see um, the large turnout for Prop Eight uh, protests? I mean, one of your points in the tragedy of today's gays is that today's gays are not involved in activism. So, were you pleased to see that the protest was? Well, it was so little, too little, too late, and, uh, and it was very unfocused. The people came out, but they didn't know what to do when they came out. For instance, the march in New York was rather impressive, but when we got to the end of the road, there was no podium, there were no speakers, there were people just dissipated, so all that energy went for naught. But it, was, it felt good to be with the crowd again. Uh, once again, we're leaderless, once again, we're unfocused, once again, we're not angry enough. Anger is what is what makes activism work, and I don't see any anger in that or fear. And uh, that's that's not going to help us. Well, we were both recently interviewed for um, a documentary on ageism, and I don't know why I was included. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're younger but, than the spring. Yes, time. but um, well, I know a lot of older people. But um, <laughs> one of the um, the points, and I don't think either of us made it, was that many young people were um, kind of giving up on safe sex because the notion of living to be an older gay, i.e., a troll, was just not even worth it because an older gay is not going to be able to pick up people sexually, and that doesn't, uh, uh, you know, and so, and so what's the point of their life if, if our whole, you know, life being gay revolves around our sexuality only and having sex. Do you know and a lot of people like that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I mean. You should just get some other friends and tell them to wise up. Well, I, I, I th that doesn't make me angry, but it makes me sad if that is the case. I mean, I think sadness can, it, the, identifying the problem is going to be one way to start fixing it. And if that is a common attitude among gay people, wow, we might as well get AIDS because what's the point in being older? Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty shocking. I have to say I hadn't heard that one. Um, I, I feel sad about almost everything. I don't see a particular area. Triumph that we've had with ACT UP getting all the drugs has been dissipated because ACT UP self self destructed itself, and uh, and everybody went back out and did this. AIDS had never happened, so that's that's been very hard for me to accept that people had returned to what we were doing before, and I don't see the spirit that ACT UP engendered. Mm -hmm. carried out. What's going on now are just little teen parades here and there, little, little, I mean, the California thing is just a, a disaster. 
from the first day, you know, I mean, that woman in, in, in Seattle has done a wonderful job getting things going, but it's, it's just, it's kindergarten stuff compared to what we need. And, and, and what they certainly need, and did we deserve to lose? We certainly didn't fight a good fight. Why do you think that, that younger people have lost the taste for activism? I go around to schools and colleges a lot, and I talk to a lot of kids, and they know their passive. They know it. I don't know what that means when you know your passive and it's still. That means you're a bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean uh, pa politically they're, they're, passive? They're, they're docile. Mm -hmm. They're not. Out, they're not out there fighting. They just know life is passive um, instead of active. So. But I mean, the, when they go the and see, girl. what? You take your mind out of the gutter. Girl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I mean, but when they go to see something like Milk, you know, which, which is universally praised, and I mean, it's hard to sit through without a tear in your eye at a great man's, you know, sacrifice of his life. I mean, you know, it, there was a moment where I was thinking maybe gay activism is going to be reborn, you know, um, but uh, it, it... I'll tell you something. The figures for Milk do not include a lot of gay people going to see it. It's doing okay. It's not doing great. The audience isn't primarily heterosexual. We found this out with most of the productions of Normal Heart. They just really don't support gay culture very much. Gay art, they don't go to, they don't, they don't read gay books very much. They don't go to gay theater very much. Um, and they're, they're not going to milk very much. So I don't know how inspirational it is. Hmm. So where are we going to get these new Harvey Milks and these new Larry Kramers? I have asked that question since almost the first day. Why was, why, why was I one of very few people doing what I was doing out there yelling and fighting? Why didn't somebody else come along to take my place? I mean, I, 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 I look around at what especially younger gay people are focused on and you know i'm not a fan of project runway i know everyone's just going to take away my gay card for saying that but um is that what they're focused on yeah yeah and and so i was in la and i was with a bunch of people who worked in the fashion industry makeup artists booking agents and they'd already seen this episode but they were eager to watch it again and with each challenge, like make a dress for $10 or make a dress out of a garbage bag or, or make a dress in five minutes, they were like, oh, oh, I can't wait to see this. Oh, I hate this dress. Or either, and they were so passionate about it. And I, then I told them, you know, I'm not a fan of the show, but let me tell you this. I just got an email from HRC thanking me for helping to pass a bill which stiffened hate crimes against gay and lesbian people. And I thought, I didn't even know that bill was, you know, in the works. So I felt really guilty when I got that email because, you know, that, that, that kind of thing isn't mentioned in most of our gay publications. And what gay publications? We got a couple, we got a couple of rags. We got a couple of, uh, of the advocate, I must say, is now really much better than it's ever been. But how many people read the advocate? How many people read these ball rags that, that pass out in every city? We have no way of communicating with each other on a national basis. None. There's no, you know, we can go online to Tal Road and, and, and Rex Walkner and things like that, and that's how I get all my gay news. But it's not a way for us to communicate with each other somehow. You can read about somebody who got bumped off in, in, in Walla Walla, but... but uh, you have no way to plug into the to the state of Washington that's doing anything about what's happening in Walla Walla. Right. So the publications Walla Walla that are is out in Washington, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I, but that's the problem, I guess, with the publications is that they don't even alert us to the big gay issues. They alert us about the latest circuit parties, and it just struck me as so odd that these you know young gay people were so passionate about stuff which I think is quite meaningless and 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 I was like what's it going to take to to make you support 
uh, stiffening the hate crime penalty? A fist in your face? I mean, what is it going to take? Well, we're getting more and more fists in our face. You're probably right. They just discovered that the Mormon Church actually had and has had for a long time a secret organization exceedingly well-funded, which is devoted to only defeating anything having to do with gay stuff. And that's gone on for many generations, and they put millions, not some, but many millions into the, into, the, into the thing in California. The Mormon church officially is doing this. And the church, of course, does it and has done it for, for centuries, you know, and we never, ever, ever fight back. So you can't- Don't stay at Marriott Hotels. Marriott? <laughs> I don't think the Mormons fund those. I grew up in Washington. That's where, where Mr. Marriott started and then. Anyway, we don't fight back, so you can't really blame the gay rag. We have to blame ourselves. It's our responsibility to take responsibility for our lives, and that's where we have been. So useless. So useless. Um, but I, don't you think that if, if the gay publication could at least include, or the bar rags, could include some issues? I mean, it would at least give us an option, you know, instead of just like, I mean, look at the gay pride parade. It's, it's like straight go-go dancers dancing on floats paid for by lube. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it, has it always been that way? I remember taking to the streets with pride and just, you know, running down the street and, and it's being... It's always been that way that we have been disorganized and powerless and needed it. And you mentioned HRC, a worthless organization. I do not understand how they managed to raise so much money, and I further don't understand where they spend it. And that's basically the only gay organization out there. The others are minuscule in comparison, and it's the task force and part of, and part of uh, pride, whatever. And, and you can't name me the name of one gay leader who's out there representing us like you would, could name black leaders or women leaders. Name me a gay person. Joe Sal Salmonella or whatever his name is, please. Mm. And it's always been that way. And I've said this since day one. I didn't become an activist until, until, until 81 when, when they would start it. Fully learned what my population of people are accused to call us a community because we're not we're much bigger than that. <clears throat> we're a population. What we're all about, and what we're all about, is that we're not about anything. Not anything focused. Not anything determined. Not anything angry. Not anything noble. Certainly responsible. We're a very irresponsible population. How do we change that? started two organizations, of, of, um, and one of them was then the Little Magnificent, and we were all dying like flies, which was our motivation. We don't have that motivation anymore. And everybody's going back to being irresponsible. I don't know, I had another, I tried to restart ACT UP, which we desperately, desperately need now, and we're desperately in this. Do you know that the Population, 3% of the population of Washington, D.C. calls the responsibles now. I just read that. 3 to 4%. That is huge. Yeah. It's what higher in, than in some places in Africa, they say. What's going on down there? We're right on the steps of the White House. So, and, and yes, a lot of those people are gay. You can't say, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a city with a large um, of the people of color population, but there are plenty of gay good cases. I don't know. I don't know. I've tried everything I know how to light fires. I tried to restart ACT UP, as I said. Nobody showed up. I fight these things, the tragedy of state existence. I put my blood into the tragedy of state existence. I wrote a book. And uh, it's still out there, and I tell everybody to read it and read the Ben Spear. Do something about it. But well, it, it, it scared me. It thrilled me. I mean, it... it, it, it shot an arrow straight into my heart and, uh, you know, kind of lit a fire of activism in me. I have to admit that back in the days of ACT UP, it was so popular 
that it kind of became notorious as a cruising ground, and I felt like I might not measure, might not be macho enough to make the cut at the meetings. I didn't think if I the felt. truth be told, but um, anyway, uh, that was quite a while ago. But um, oh so gosh, it's it's in the yeah, um, the there was something else that I'm forgetting about that I was going to ask you that we, what we were just talking about BC population. Uh, you know, we're going to take a break right here. So okay. You can regain yeah. your thought. And I need to, I think your chart had a little higher in this complicated Because it's been showing me that I'm on the edge. Yeah. What do you, yeah. 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 if you go into yeah. one, yeah. when you go into your one chart, what do I think we should do? Monitor this so either I keep running our mouse. Organize. I mean, I don't see how, shot, you know, when I see what gay people are focused yeah, on now, I, I mean, maybe you can be focused on activism on and Britney Spears, oh, but I just yeah. think it's oh, a different mindset, yeah. and I think that it's not just the gays that don't care, I think it's the straights that don't care either, and we've, we've sat back and we've done nothing for eight years while horrible things have happened, like, you know, the writ of habeas corpus has been taken away. I mean, with the, they're, they're very effective at, you know, distracting us with, you know, I mean, this, this, this actress who died, uh, you know, just, just recently, I said, I'm not really familiar with her. And someone said, she only made three movies. And I don't mean to make light of her death, but, I mean, That's it's just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but but I mean, I'm just like, okay, so all of a sudden, everything's focused over here, and so everything... It wasn't Vanessa's goal. Right. Yeah, but... I was listening to you, and yeah. one of the questions is that that came up in my mind, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, is to what degree you feel, even from the gay backdrop, the gay community has defined... Gay, excuse me, that's right. Gay population has defined itself around very specific demographic structures. Demographics. In other words, to what degree do you, you, you lower it at all? Do you, you know, and this is something that I would be interested to see have come out in conversation if you even see it that way. Like, for instance, you know, when you think of, you know, when you talk about gay, normally I mean, most people's association with the gay population is what is generated in urban settings. You know, because that's really where it's mostly, right. right. What is it about these urban settings? What is it about the way in which gay pans out? For instance, speaking very specifically, I'm a, bla I'm a black gay man. I know that my experience with the straight population is a different one than, say, the Latino, so be my Asian, okay. anything in between. So what was it that was, what was including the white? Drag. drag. Right, drag, she perfect. Was, she was above her. The experience is a different higher. experience. Yeah, it was above and her I wonder high. sometimes to myself, how much activism yeah. and then I think is lost in, our, in this population because all the various groups that make up this population haven't met, maybe always felt like they're part of whatever this population is or that activist part of it. Well, it's funny because in smaller cities where there aren't enough large enough groups right. to splinter off into the black right. bar they are or the group. lesbian yeah, group or the drag like Rochester, softball New team. York. Right. Their parades are actually much more spirited. Mm -hmm. Their organization. Roll it, roll it, rolling. Okay. Hold on, hold on, one sec. So you can see this is all three fingers straight. Got it. Six. You know. Uh, hold on. <laughs> you know we used to have more fun. You know where this is supposed to be in honor of Stonewall. And have we made any progress? Of course we've made progress. Have we not made any progress? Of course we haven't made any progress, but certain things we lost. We used to have a lot more fun, and we used to be able to make love without fear of death. So that, those are both very heavy things, and they're interrelated. So I'm sure this has had a great psychic effect on the population. How could it not? What it hasn't been able to do somehow is to help take it to the next level take that and work with it and overcome it like you overcome a handicap or whatever. Um, and I don't know how many people have that. Do you think 
the Gill Foundation and Ken Sherrill at Hunter did a couple of amazing studies about gay people and how they self-identify. And a huge number of gay people do not self-identify first and foremost as gay. They self-identify as bisexual. And that's just horseshit. Until we can self-identify every one of us first and foremost as gay or anything else, we're not going to be able to put a population out there that's meaningful. I consider myself gay first before I'm a gay, before I'm a gay man or a gay Jew or, or, or a gay writer or a gay activist, I am gay. And that dictates every way, everything I do, how I look at things, how I react, how I write. This is New issue of the Advocate has an article about all the new people who have been that, that Obama has appointed who are gay who are working in the White House, and it scared me because they're all saying things like, "We're all in this together." Blah blah, meaning straights and gays. We're all in. That's the new. That's the new philosophy. We're all going to work together in this, and and I just, I, I just, I just almost had a tough day. We're not all in this together. We are not all in this together. They are not with us. We have to go and we have to fight for us. I don't want you being in the White House not fighting for us first and foremost. You gays and lesbians who are on Obama's staff and you have, by what you are saying you are not fighting for us. You are fighting for all his other issues. Great. Then it doesn't make any difference whether you're gay or straight. And Obama knows it. So we, the people, have got to start the fight again. Mm. You know, I say at uh, gay pride rallies that are often on Sundays around the country, it's great that we come out and we have a party and we show our strength in numbers and we say we're not ashamed to be gay and we celebrate the different types of gay people in the community, lesbian, whatever. Population. Yeah, population, sorry. And, um, and then I say... But we do this, we come out one Sunday per year. Our enemies come out every Sunday exactly. per year they in a church. church. 52 to 1 are the odds. How can we win? We've got to get organized and we've got to meet. But in order to do that, to do that we've got to care. And I just don't see that, that younger people care. Forget younger people, any gay people. I don't see any gay people anywhere caring to the extent they should care that they need to care for us to have any kind of power. Do you think that it's not, that it's also straight people who just don't care? You mean about straight issues? About Iraq, about stopping the war in Iraq that 80% of the country is supposedly against. It I mean, true. if you're against it and your tax dollars are going to drop bombs on people that never had weapons of mass destruction to send over to you anyway, then you're a murderer. <laughs> you're a terrorist. You know, and if that doesn't bother you, and supposedly 80% of the country is against it, I mean, I just don't think people care. The, you know, George oh, Bush took away right. the writ of habeas corpus, and which, you know, it, what, predated the Magna Carta? I mean, not, not even the Constitution. And it, all that is is, why have you put me in jail? We don't have that right in this country anymore. And I just think that that just floats by us because we're so concerned with Jennifer Aniston's latest hairstyle. Or, um, you know. You don't move in a very butch crowd, do you? <laughs> Larry! <laughs> I can't imagine what you mean by that ridiculous statement. Uh, well, I mean, you I know. Mean, I, my, my people don't think about Jennifer Aniston or whoever my people are. They don't? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sort of a hermit these days. Well, I think younger gays um, are, are, I mean, the marketing has worked. They are obsessed with. Britney Spears, they're obsessed with Paris Hilton, they're obsessed with Lindsay Lohan, and they're obsessed with tabloid gossip, becoming stars themselves via YouTube. I mean, even the newscast, Larry King is saying, meet me on Twitter after the show. I mean, it's, just, it, it's, it's absolutely laughable, but it's giving the audience, it's that same cheap thing that entertainers, I've been guilty of it too, that were, come out on the stage and say, Phoenix! And then they applaud. You know, because you've said the name of their city. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense, but it always works. But even our newscasters, I mean, news, um, is, uh, you know, 
trying to get people to call in and text in and uh, make YouTube videos so that they can get involved uh, and, and be stars in some way. I mean, I think it's a national obsession and it's, an, it, it's a selfishness. It, it has nothing to do with furthering the, 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 the needs of a com population. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think... I mean, it's kind of shocking to see Larry King say, meet me on Twitter after this. I mean, it, it's absurd. I wrote an essay a hundred years ago for a gay publication, a gay paper on Long Island, no longer in existence, about how to, how to start your own little gay organization. And it's included in my book of essays, Reports from the Holocaust. And I would urge people to go and find that essay. And everybody can start a little organization they want to go devoted to things that they care about, but they don't see an organization that they want to plug into. It doesn't take much to be an activist. You know, I've stood up by myself many times alone with the sign. Um, it's, a, it's a time in history when nobody seems to want to be an activist. And I don't know what that's about either. Especially now, with so many people out of work, you think there would be more anger. You know? um, well, I think it's anger about money rather than whatever. anger about issues. and. and isn't Whatever. that the real Ang anger is a very healthy emotion you know get it out there why you can yell about AIG as much as you want but stop it already it, well it just bugs me that people are, are, are more concerned about money uh, than than issues like global warming or stopping the war in Iraq or even fair we pay don't for women. realize that people hate us they don't dislike us they don't just not accept us they hate us and until we accept that fact and face up to that fact, we are going to get nowhere. We are going to be the second, third, tenth, hundredth rate population powerless that we are and that we have always been, with the exception of a few years with ACT UP, and that we will continue to be. The Mormon Church hates us. The Catholic Church hates us. Muslims hate us. They murder us. Why does this not make us angry enough to fight back? I do not know why. I no longer have any answers. What do you say after that? Let's pray for just a second. Why do we just why do you pray? Do you just want to? Well, no, I want to. We want this fucking piece of. I, I, I want you to be in your one shot marker, uh, Clay. Go ahead. We're just going to slate it, and then as soon as Amber gets out of the shot, uh, Bunny, you could respond. All the kids wow. are calling. How do I respond to okay, that? Okay, slates. They hate the us. They hate us. It's hate. H-A-T-E. It's a word we refuse to accept as existing that's killing us. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Pope just a day or two ago has come out in Africa and, and told uh, the people of Cameroon that condoms don't actually... Uh, don't stop AIDS. Well, not just don't stop it, but aggravate it. And, you know, it's like, I, I just, how can that not infuriate gay people? I mean, how could there be a gay Catholic after hearing that from your, you know, this isn't like a Jerry Falwell fringe. This is the religious leader of the Catholic Church saying, because I'm against contraception, I will lead you to your death. How could there be a gay Catholic? I mean, that, that is outrageous. But and then again, again how could there be a different We don't have any leaders protesting. The Times wrote an article about it, of all people, saying the Pope was wrong. But I don't hear it coming from HRC or ABC or whoever else is out there, XYZ, who is supposed to be gay organization. Do you think that, I, it kind of bugs me that the only, the only thing that I'm, the people are gay people are getting riled up about is prop eight and gay marriage when it seems like there are so many other issues as well. well a lot of this a lot of that is being media hyped out of California and out of angry gays who are mad with other angry gays because they they screwed up the campaign and they're trying to keep it alive. I 
was really curious. Um, Dennis Kucinich came out in the Logo Channel interview um, and said, gays, I support gay marriage, support me, the only candidate who was for gay marriage. And I'm wondering, why was there no movement among gays or HRC or no statements issued saying support Dennis Kucinich? Like, get out of the war immediately and put an international peacekeeping troop? That was why I liked him. <laughs> I guess people thought he couldn't win. Well, he does look like an elf, and <laughs> which is not the most authoritative look. but <laughs> And he wears cheap shoes, and his yeah. wrists are so thin that it's tough to get cuffs that even... <laughs> <laughs> there you Which just makes named, him, you pinned him, buddy. Well, I mean, it, it, but I mean, his heart was in the right place. And I mean, it was really moving to see him on the gay channel saying, hey, I support your right to marry. Support me. And I would ask people, well, who, gay people, who do you support? And they would say, Hillary's my girl. I'd be like, what does that mean? What does that exactly. mean? She's my girl. She gives you a warm feeling because... If we were, if ACT UP were still around... After the Pope made a statement like that, we'd be... If who were still around? Act up. Uh -huh. We'd be outside and inside St. Patrick's in a minute. That was a very effective demonstration. Put Act Up on the map. They were very surprised that Act Up showed so many blood at that conference. Anyway, Obama's got a little longer honeymoon now. And we'll see. Maybe he'll throw us some kind of a bone. He seems to be so we taking care of a lot of a lot of things and I'm not going to say I'm, I'm fed up with them yet because that would not be fair I just don't feel as good as I wish I did mm. okay. well I mean the economic crisis is, is, is taking precedence over everything which I, I certainly can't figure out <laughs> I certainly can't figure that out but um, well, you know gays are suffering from it too Gays have houses that are for sales being foreclosed and all of that. And it would be nice to know that we were included in in his thoughts. And he hadn't really said as much about the gay marriage issue as I had liked. He was said certain good things, but it didn't to get me elected kind of good things. I'm not so sure that when push comes to shove, he's going to be very supportive. The thing has got to get to the Supreme Court somehow. That's what's going to be decided, and I guess we got to wait for a few justices to cave before we can appoint a couple new ones, and then hopefully we can get it into the Supreme Court and have them rule it, deal with it, or whatever. Um, I wish we were attending to certain to other issues besides just marriage. Marriage seems to have usurped the entire agenda for so many other things. I agree, and um, when the HRC issued a statement about um, the fundamentalist preacher who was going to give the inaugural, what was his name? Let's not really mention it. Okay, let's not mention his name. Um, they mentioned a statement about that, and on the same day, George Bush pushed through some midnight legislation that gave anyone that worked at a pharmacy the right to not dispense with medication if they disapproved of the person's lifestyle, which means that some Mormon could not give, you know, desperately needed AIDS medication to someone in a wheelchair who might not have access to another pharmacy, or a Scientologist could not, you know, give out an antidepressant, or a, you know, or, I mean, I've got Jehovah's Witnesses in my family who could not give out anything. So, uh, to anyone, um, or just say, you look like a slut. I'm not going to give you any um, medicine for herpes. I mean, that's quite shocking. I, I, I wondered why there was no HRC statement on that. I mean, that gives the power of some nut, not, not just the pharmacist, but the cashier in a, in a Utah pharmacy, the right to take away drugs that someone might need to live. That's pretty shocking. I thought that was a lot more important than that, that preacher getting one minute, which he totally flubbed. It was an awful. <laughs> what do you think we should do? 
Well, I think that um, I I always think that people would get angry if they had the proper networks to get information. Yes, you can seek out the information, as you said, on Tally Road, but I think that we need to pressure our bar rags to include more information. I think we need to pressure our um, network news to give more balanced coverage of, you know, things, which I'm so glad that, you know, MSNBC and Rachel Maddow is on the news now reporting on stories like um, the fact, last night she mentioned something that was fascinating, that not only could the soldiers, uh, they were prevented by the Pentagon from using YouTube because they don't want the truth getting out there, um, but they, they created something for them called Truth Tube, and now they're not even being able to uh, access that freely. So, I mean, I, I think that there are people, I mean, just like the, 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 the pharmacy thing, it, where, you know, druggists can refuse to give you the medicine you need if they disapprove of your lifestyle. I think that if straight people knew about that, they would care. But I just don't think that they're getting the information. I don't think people are aware that Bush did not allow people to see uh, soldiers in their coffins. I just, I, I hear what you're saying, and of course it's true, but I think people do have information, they just are in denial about it. Those stories are not invisible. They hit the papers, the regular newspapers. And uh, like you say, it's on Rachel Maddow, and it's, it's, it's on Tall Road, but they don't respond. That's from factual testimony that we seem to have as part of our genetic makeup. And that's how, that's where I always get stumped. I don't know how to go past that, you know. It acts up when we're dying. That's what motivated us. We could see each other dying right in front of us and going into our heart because of that. And the more people died, the more people came to act up and the more powerful we became and it was a mighty thing. A mighty thing we achieved, a mighty result. It's the greatest thing I think that gay population has ever achieved and might ever achieve. Well, you mentioned in the tragedy of today's gays that there's a perception, a, 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 a misperception that AIDS drugs work and that that may be a reason that there are increased transmissions of HIV. They do work, they're too good to own. They, they mean they have side effects and they cost you a lot of money, but they're too good to own. It removes the fear. It removes the terror, obviously. I mean, people can still, can still fuck without condoms because, oh my God, you know, I thought my well was drunk last night. I mean, it shows you how careless they are. It shows you that the drugs work enough to put them in that kind of a mindset. Sure. Uh, at some point, it would be great to have you both speak. I'd like to hear some, um, for example, if you were speaking to a group of young people, how you would address them. I mean, because you're talking about the anger, you're talking about they hate it. Well, so what would you tell a group of young people? If you had them, you know, hostage in this room, 20 young people, 25 years old, what would be your message to them? I want to just, spend, just spend an hour talking about Well, that. but I mean, it's, I want to, Please fuck me. Like a call to action. I mean, I mean, you said, you said well, I, I don't know. Maybe you have that answered it. One this here that's out of place. Oh, I'm Charlie. sorry. It's Only okay. one. Only one. <laughs> yeah, we're doing great. There we go. Okay. All right. Put, put, are we rolling? Yes. yes. Action. I go to schools a lot and I tell them. They say, what would I tell them to do? And I tell them they have to organize. I went and spent a week at, at uh, Middlebury. Middlebury, and there's a large gay population in the school, and they didn't even know who all each other were. There was no, the gay organization had five people in it, and maybe a maybe hundred showed up to hear me, and I, including faculty, and I said, you have to organize, you have to identify each other, find out who you are in this, in this school, and, and, and the faculty have to be perhaps more out there helping you, and, and it worked for a week. And they all formed this organization. For a week. And it was great. 
and he came this came the summer vacation, and I was cold. Came the fall, it just wasn't there anymore. So, well, um, I have an idea that might rejuvenate Act Up. Please, free crystal meth and barebacking demonstration. What do you think? <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Well, you know, a number of Act Up people. After it was all over, got into crystal meth for whatever reason. I think without ACT UP, and ACT UP went out of a lot of lives because it was so much a part of our lives, it was our daily life. And everybody went out and did it. And even every night if you wanted to go. And once it was over, we didn't have anything to do. And, and a number of them were turning into crystal meth, which was. I tried it to lose weight, but it just made me eat faster. <laughs> <laughs> just warming up. <laughs> um, Did you try it? <laughs> no, I have tried it. I hate it, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I focused, that, and that enabled me to focus on heroin, guess, ecstasy, acid, I guess, cocaine, you know, and we're, we're, liquor. We're concentrating on the party people. But let's talk about the professional people. Let's talk about about people who actually lead serious adult lives. I'm using very there's no other word for it, I know, but whatever. Who don't go to discos and who don't go to fire on but who are smart, you know, what are they doing to participate in the responsibility of of, of, of our population? Nothing nothing, not a at least the gay kids are hanging out with each other. What do the other people do? What do they belong to? What do they do socially? What do they do? Do they go to listen to events at the center? I don't know. Well, I think that that's because all of the, uh, it, everything is geared towards youth. I mean, every, every that, that's, that's not true. The center has a lot of things that are, that are, the gay center in New York is an amazing place with, with 18 things to go to if you really wanted to, of, of all ages. Well, it, 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 it if you look at invites for it, the, the things in, in the bar rags, which I guess I read a lot more of than you do, yeah, but um, the bar rags they're all geared towards bodybuilders. I mean, even the guys in the ads for AIDS medication look like they've just come out of a gym. Yeah, but you know how many, how few, how few copies of bar rags are printed? How do you, there's no pen, penetration, if I may use that loaded word, into the actual population. You know, we, again, we don't have any way of speaking to each other. And, and, and the New York, what's it, Gay Sin News, whatever our printer label is called, which is not a bar rag, but it, you know, is available, uh, has a, tons of news in it about the awful things that are happening. So this business about the, the news isn't out there is not true. It's out there for anybody who wants to be bothered to be responsible enough to respond to it. We have to get beyond that. As I said, I don't know how to get, and I wish somebody, I don't know how to get to the next level, you know? If this were AA, what would be the next level? Um, to take all the information and put us back into being responsible citizens again. Because that's what it's about. It's about responsibility. We are citizens of a world. And we have responsibilities to each other. I mean, every religion, every parent, everybody's always taught that. And, uh, well, maybe if we trick the, 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 the bar rag into putting some more of the information and sneak it in and get people interested what? and get them involved, and maybe they think that the newsy ones are just all news and all fire and brimstone, and they're just not ready for that. I mean, it's a very tabloid culture. Maybe you've got to kind of lure them in, in it's the same way that a kooky drag queen has <laughs> lured people into what hearing... What you have to say. You're amazing for a drag queen to be so passionate for the cause and your fellow sisters. I really, that really went out. Um, you put too much faith in the bar racks, I'm afraid. No, but I just think that that's what the, the gays that I know read as the Bible. I mean, people, you know, the newspapers are dying. Homo and the tab. Things like that. Hmm? Homo X, too. HX. 
And next, oh, but and I mean, I've been interviewed in both of those places, and I laid it all out there too. And one of the best interviews that was ever done of me was done by, done by Jeff Whitty uh, in one of them. I can't remember which, and and it, it was so good that they published it in two or three issues. Don't know if it made any difference, especially in that crowd. So. Well, I mean, that crowd is the one that's geared towards the most superficial events. Well, I'm not looking for salvation from that crowd. I'm looking for more salvation from, you know, the gay partners at Paul Weiss or uh, at, at the accounting firms or at the real estate firms or all those people, you know, who, who, were, who were making good livings and, and, and leading in most part adult lives and maybe even in partners and have and have families why aren't they fighting for their families i don't know you know a lot well, of people thing. have retreated into couplehood taking their kids and and leading a very private life and 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 withdrawing really from from anything else which is good or bad good because they got something and it's bad because they're not responsible enough to realize that they got to fight for this human unit more than ever one thing that you mentioned in the tragedy of today's gays was where are the rich gays starting this, you know, helping to fund this movement? Where are they? I don't know. And why David, aren't they David, helping? David Geffen chose to give all his money to the UCLA Medical School, so it would be called the David Geffen School of Medicine. He did give money to the MHC to fund that thing down there, but he's got $80 million. It would be nice if he would fund an organization that, that Barry Bill has gone straight, as far as I can see. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know what happened to Calvin. Calvin? Yeah. I don't really think Calvin knows what happened to Calvin. <laughs> Probably true. But you know, there are a lot of other rich gays whose names we don't know. Tons of rich lesbians. HRC, I think, gets a proportion, huge proportion of its income from rich women. And uh, I don't know how to get into all of them. The Gill Foundation has had good success courting rich gays into p political activist plan funding uh, individual states to get the right people elected. They're the ones that got rid of Sam Santori or whatever that monster out of Pennsylvania <laughs> and slowly are beginning to get rid of the politicians. They, fe they felt that that was the, the move to make, is to get rid of all the people who are against us in, in Congress and lo local. And they're having, they're having success at it. And they have a lot of rich people who come and, and meet once a month and a couple times a year. And they've raised a number of million, many millions of dollars for all of that. But it's all sort of secret, it's all kind of hush-hush, which is fine, but um, no one has come up with an idea of how, as a result, to deal with the grassroots of it all. I think um, e even the bar rag community um, has dissipated now because of online hooking up for sex. I mean, you know, so I think, you know, it's either, it's e there's even less feeling of a community. You know, and I travel around to quite a few different cities than ever. The internet has had a lot of pluses and minuses. One, you can talk to each other, and one, we can't talk to each other. It's very hard. And we can put heavily photoshopped old photographs in personal attacks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told. Of course not. Yes. <laughs> so we can't on your mouth. Why? <laughs> it works. I mean, uh, no. You know, maybe some rich gays will be watching us. Bunny needs a new wig. <laughs> and say, Bunny and Larry, let's get together and 
talk about this. Maybe you should start a website. Maybe Bunny and I should start another organization. I don't know. I would probably never want to do that. But <laughs> maybe a day goes by when it's not an issue that requires some kind of activism, particularly, or protests, or so on and so forth. You know. Well, you are busy working on a book. First draft I just printed out. It's a hard book on four thousand pages. I bet, I bet. So it's been taking me a few months just to get it through. And is that first draft like <coughs> with an end? Yeah. Wow. I've been working on it since well it was sort of towards the major the major arrival point, but I still got you know, five more years in it. Five more years? Well, it's hard. I mean, I discovered so many things, you know, about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and Andrew Jackson and Lewis of Lewis and Clark and de Tocqueville. We've had a lot of good writers out there. Wow. We do. That's another thing that bugs me totally is that gay history is not taught anywhere. <coughs> Gender studies is taught. Gender studies is not gay history. Gender studies? Yes, sir. What is that? I love you. <laughs> I'll tell that to the Yale faculty. <laughs> Gender studies is why you no, I, why no. you wearing a wig. I did. You know, my parents asked that yeah. a they lot. Go in, they, go in, <laughs> they go into the history of why people wear wigs or something, but if they don't go into, you know, the history of George Washington being gay. Well, honey, this country, this great country, was founded by men wearing wigs. And I think that it's time to take the nation back. <laughs> Hear that, Julie? I was quite surprised how much I was able to find out about George Washington being gay. Really? Lincoln we've known about. Lincoln, there were a couple. I of didn't. Years. But you heard it from me for the first time? Yeah. Way to win, girl. Well, There's I guess market. Lincoln and I didn't go to the same cruising ground. Well, he went to it. book out called The Intimate Man in the World of Abraham Lincoln by Tripp, T-R-I-P-P. -P. I urge everybody to read it. Marvelous book. And he was, he was gay. Hook, line, and sinker gay. George, George I heard about first from, from, from Gore Vidal, who pointed out that he was in love with George Horace Vidal, Sandra Hamilton. And I've discovered a lot about that. So, but again, why am I the this girl, or where are the gay where are the gay academics? You know, what, where, I started a program at Yale for gay history, and it became gay gender studies, and they spent all my money and then closed it down. I'm not very fond of Yale. Who has any gay? <laughs> anyway, what's the title of your book? The American People. had different names for us or for themselves or had no name at all. But we knew who we were and we knew how to find others. So all this horseshit that just because there was no word for homosexual until the late 19th century, so therefore we didn't exist, is just bullshit. That's what I want history departments to teach. Good luck to them. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, I think my brother gave a million dollars to Yale to do just that. They pissed it all away. Mm. Not very happy with it yet. Uh, can we uh, just round the question out about Stonewall? Since sure. I mean, just as in, you know, since we are talking about history. What is so the question? Um, just why has it, how is it, um, how did Stonewall become such a marker for the gay rights movement? And, you know, does it mean, you know, what does it mean? Does it mean anything that we have a 40th? Anniversary. Is, and is I think it the 40th coming up? Yeah. yeah. And I think we're going to have to change tapes yeah, right let's now. Change